jokes being made about the gates of heaven. St. Peter is at, stands at the gates, he decides who gets in, who gets out. So the question is, where did these gates, heavenly gates, originate? And where we find them already in the Western tradition is in Plato. In Plato's Republic, where he says there are two openings up in the sky, and there are judges that sit by there, and they order the just to go into the heavens to the door, to one of the doors. This is um, a mosaic pad at a mitraeum in Austria. Um, and you can see that there's a, a ladder. There's a, there are mm -hmm. steps going up to the heaven. This is Mercury, this is Venus, Mars, Jupiter, etc. So the stairway to heaven <coughs> is through the planets. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but anybody can tell me what that is? Well, not really. That's really just the ecliptic. It's there along that line. But that light that envelops the planet, that's the zodiacal light. Mm -hmm. It's better called, it would be better called the ecliptical light because it's along the ecliptic, along the path of the planets. But that's a name that we're stuck with, so we're going to go with it. Now, people say, well, but the ancients didn't talk about the zodiacal light. Well, of course they did, but we don't recognize it. And here's Pindar, about 450 BC, already talking about the awesome stair that marks the shining way to Olympus. So the shining path to Olympus along the stairs. The planets are the stairs, and the shining path that envelops the stair, the stairway to heaven, is the zodiacal light. We have too much light here, so you can see the slide. But um, there's the moon, there's Venus down here, and there's Jupiter up there. And I took this with my iPhone, this picture, <laughs> which is why it's not so good. But it's from the parking lot of my supermarket. So you can see this. This is not. Ah, that's even better. So there's the moon, there's Venus, and there's Jupiter. And that's the parking lot of my supermarket. So you, you can, on any one night, if the planets are in a good alignment, as you might say, if they're in the proper position, you can actually see this very simply. And the stairway to heaven along the planets, that was shown on Roman coins for hundreds of years. This is a coin of Mark Antony. And they held the standards in front of the legions as they were walking as they were going into battle. And if somebody died, they would go up along the planets into heaven. Here on this one, it's Gordian III, a coin of Gordian. You see the Capricorn on top. That was a personal sign of Augustus. Augustus was deified after he died, as were most Roman emperors. Oh, thank you. And thank so again, we see the moon, the planets, so, and then on top, Augustus was ready to welcome any soldier who had to die that day in the field. The question is, where is heaven? So if you go up the, up the planets, where do you get to that's heaven? And heaven is the Milky Way. This is, and again, not a very good picture of mine, but you can see the Milky Way. So the Milky Way as heaven was reported by many writers in the past. Heraclides of Pontum, who was actually um, a student, a disciple of Plato. You have Ovid in his Metamorphosis. Cicero talks about it in The Dream of Scipio. Um, Manilius talks about it in his Astronomica. Macrobius commented on Cicero's Dream of Scipio 400 years later, and he was saying again, the Milky Way is the heaven. Is heaven. Marcianus Capella does the same thing. He calls the galaxy is where Zeus has called together the Congress of the Gods. And here's a picture of about 1200, 1300 AD. It's an illumination, an illustration for the dream of Scipio. There's Scipio dreaming, and he goes up to heaven, which is the Milky Way. He meets his adopted parents over there. There's the plane of the ecliptic. You have all the planets that you would go up through. 
And you, these are the intersections over here on top and on the bottom, the Milky Way and the planets. Manilius in his Astronomica actually tells us that these are two visible circles in the sky. There is the path of the planets, and it shines like a flag up in the sky, and the other circle, visible circle, is the Milky Way, and it's placed cro crosswise to it, like an X. And here's a picture of that. Here's the zodiacal light along planets that, that you would march up, that you see the planets, you are going up through the planets, and here's the Milky Way, and that's the visible X in the sky. Now, on coins, you see this intersection in the sky on coins of the Roman um, Im imperators, emperors, over hundreds of years. Here's a celestial globe intersecting lines. Domitian, when he became emperor, he had his young son, who had died as an infant, he had the young son <coughs> deified, Divus. Divus, Caesar, Imperator, Domitian, <coughs> Filius. That's his son. He made him a god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars up there that the young god is playing with. Those are the planets. So over here we have the intersection of the planets and the Milky Way. Again, Plato. This is where we get the X, Plato's X. He made some stuff together, cosmic stuff. He split them in half and then he twisted them so that they were like an X. And he bent them back in a circle, two circles intersecting like an X. Again, a coin of Antoninus Pius. Italia sits atop a celestial globe with stars on it. And you can see the intersection intersecting there. And we know that Justin Martyr, in his first apology, talks about it. He says, the son of God in Plato's Timaeus, who was placed like an X in the universe. Well, he's mixing up the son of God with the cosmic soul with that Plato is talking about. But we can see that both for the Christians and for the Romans, the pagans, that intersection was very important. That X in the sky was on Roman coins for hundreds of years. This was, this is another coin of Antoninus Pius. It's a denarius instead of a sestercius. Um, you can see the X right there on the globe. Here's um, a coin of Constantine. On the coin of Constantine, there's Jupiter, Yogi Conservatory. The, Jupiter is holding a globe with an X on it and stars on it. He's presenting the celestial globe to the imperator, to the emperor. Here's the sun. Of Constantine. That's um, constant. And again, even though he's supposed to be a Christian emperor by now, he's still using the same symbolism. We are still using the globe with an X on it, and there are stars on it. He's, he holds, he controls the gate of heaven in his head because he's the emperor. He's a beautiful coin from uh, the Republic. About 107 BC, Manlius, um, the sun god in his chariot, the moon up there, stars on either side, and right there is Plato's X, the visible X in the sky, sits right on the coin. This is some, another great coin of the Republic. You have Castor and Pollux, the Dioscuri, Gemini, the two stars, and there's an intersecting lances right there, pointing to the intersection in the sky. This is the intersection that we're talking about. There's the Milky Way, <coughs> there's the ecliptic, there's the Gemini. That's the intersection in the sky that appeared on so many coins. Going to the Mitraic tradition, we have the Toroctony, and here's the Cape of Mithras. And in the Cape of Mithras, we see a band. <coughs> this is the band of the Milky Way. And here's the planets going up intersecting. 
we already see Kudurus, land grant monuments, where on the top we see <coughs> Venus, Ishtar, the moon, and Shamash, the sun. So the, the planets are up here, same over here, we see the planets, the ecliptic, and we see this gigantic snake over here and on the side over here. And that giant snake is the Milky Way. That's Tiamat that Marduk has killed, thrown up into the sky, and opened gates on two sides. Here's one of the gates. It's the Scorpio Gate. It's by the constellation Scorpion, Scorpius. And if you read Gilgamesh, you can already read that he goes and travels to the gates of the sun, which, is, which are guarded by the Scorpion people. This is the intercession by Scorpio. Right there is the middle of the Milky Way of the galaxy. Here is the zodiacal light coming up, intersecting it. Here's a couple of planets along it. So the two gates are one by Taurus, one by Scorpio. Here's the Taurus gate. We see the sun rising again, and bold men holding open the gates of the sun. This is a fantastic seal, cylinder seal impression from the Metropolitan Museum. On the left is Gilgamesh as a bold man. On the right is Enkidu as a Scorpio, Scorpion man. And they are battling the giant Humbaba. Again, we're coming to this intersection. So one is Taurus, the other one will be Scorpio. This was Gemini. Three different civilizations talk about this particular place. Gemini is Roman and Greek. Taurus is Mithraic, Middle Eastern, Babylonian. Then we have Orion down here. And Orion appears in the Egyptian civilization. Orion is Osiris. And you can read about it. There are gates in the sky in the pyramid texts, in the coffin texts, in the Book of the Dead. This path, the middle path, the middle register, is the path of the sun. There's the sun in his boat traveling under the earth. He is being pulled along by other gods, and he's accompanied by other gods. And there's this white path that intersects the path of the sun. That's the Milky Way. There is a gate right here. Those are hinges. The gate opens and closes, and there's Osiris standing at the gate of heaven at the at where we're interconnected. Up here, there's another gate. They didn't have a whole circle to go by, but the other gate is sitting there, and there's Scorpius at the other end. So they, too, looked at the same two gates, one by Osiris, one by Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Is a coin showing Julius Caesar. On that coin, we also see again the celestial sphere intersecting paths. The, this is the rudder. He rules the world. He's the Roman emperor, imperator. He's not quite the emperor yet. Um, well, we're going to have to hurry here. <laughs> uh, another coin. Okay, thank you. Another coin of Julius Caesar. He is the priest, the high priest, it's called Pontifex Maximus. He's ogre, he reads the signs in the sky, he tells the will of the gods, and he's Pontifex Maximus. That Pontifex Maximus was carried over, this is 1801, to the Roman ruler, who is now the Pope, who is still the temporal ruler of Rome, and he still carries the title of Pontifex Maximus. He rules the intersection where the gates of heaven are. He's, after all, the representative of Peter, St. Peter, to whom it was said, I will give you the keys to the gates of heaven. Again, you see the intersection. One of the keys is gold, the other one is silver. One, the gold represents the path of the sun. The silver represents the Milky Way. If we don't believe that or we think it's just a coincidence, this is a fresco in the Vatican by Raphael. It's called the School of Athens. On the right is Aristotle. On the left is Plato. Plato is pointing up to the heavens, and he's carrying a book. It's, it's a Timaeus. 
wherein is described the X in the heaven. So even here in the Vatican, we hear about Plato's Timaeus and its X in the sky. This is a later coin. Again, it's the Roman emperors, one of the sons of Constantine. They're getting away from the pagan symbolism, but they're still using the intersecting symbol in the sky. There are stars there. This is the phoenix, resurrected bird. This is, again, we got coming back to the same coin of the Republic. So we see that it went over hundreds and hundreds of years from the Republic to the late empire. We see the X in the sky. That's it. Incredible.